But <coughs> if your your attention is passing through the center of the Agya Chakra, you don't see any light. But if it is not passing through that, then what happens? Because your attention is outside, you see the light. Because it is it is enlightening also, you see. And you just see the light but not the Kundalini is not passing through, it just is stuck up there. And that's why because of that light, you your eyes go on like that, you see. People have seen even the complete uh, complete uh, flow of light moving up like that. But they they have not felt the realization. They see they saw it coming up to the Agya and then the whole thing dropped back. They saw it. See, they saw the Kundalini, how it was helping. The Adi Kundalini was helping the your Kundalini. They saw it. Even this light rising is because of that, because your attention is still outside, you see. So you go on the flickering of the eyes. Then I tell you to fix up your eyes on to my figure. Then you fix it up onto my figure and my face. What happens? The Chaitanya pushes you through your eyes into the center, you see. So that you see me as I am, but the eyes uh, are controlled by the Chaitanya. And the attention that is inside, you see, is pushed inside that, uh, what you call the apparition uh, in the, in the uh, Agya Chakra. So I always say that if you are fluttering your eyes, please pay attention to me. So that the Chaitanya works out through your eyes and fixes your attention to pass through. Because the light starts spreading on all the sides and you see that light, you see, and the eyes go on like that. You cannot close your eyes. It is, that is the reason for that. Then the second thing you said that you are facing the, you, you are Sahasra Rava on the thing. Yes, one of the reasons for Nirvichara is that. But also Nirvichara is a way to express the blessings of your mother. When she wants to bless you, see, you wrote the letter, she was happy. Just to bless you, you became Nirvichara. You see, it's a blessing. That's how you, that's the grace, you see, that comes to you to, from your mother, that you become Nirvichara. That's, that's one has to remember. If you do the things that I tell you, I feel, I bless you very much, because they are for your good, for your kalyana, for your mangal. And that's why you are blessed, and that blessing you feel as Nirvichara. Because I am Nirvichara myself. I'm I'm Douglas Fry, one of the early Sahaja Yogis from London. And what I would like to say is it's rather amazing the way that the forces of good and the forces of bad have nevertheless pushed us towards Mataji. Now the person that introduced us to Mataji, as you have heard from Gavin, was a yoga playboy. Now, the reason was that? A yoga playboy. A guru. A yoga playboy, yes. He was, he was. Now, the reason he came to England was to make some money out of yoga. The reason he came to England was because he'd seen this particular fake guru with the long hair that looked like a pop star. <laughs> and he, he told me that he, he told me, and I think he might have told some of the others of us, that this particular guru had said to him, you should go to England. So, obviously, he came to England and started yoga classes. Now, where the yoga classes started was the last place that you, you could te teach yoga, because it was very, very cold, and we started in winter and there was no heating there. But for some reason, the yoga classes still went on. Now, eventually he met Mataji and tried his experiment on us. And we all felt coolness in that. We all, we all got the um, realization. Now, another, another thing that this yoga playboy had tried was transcendental meditation, I found out. Now, after us having got realization, he tried to teach us meditation. And the technique that he was trying to do was a technique used by TM. They, the TM, TM people, they give you a mantra. They make the mantra up themselves. Or they sometimes they give you a name that sounds a bit like Sanskrit. In fact, I heard one one fellow who had a mantra that sounded like key ring, 
Kiwi. 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 If you pronounce it strangely, it can sort of sound like sound sound. If you pronounce it strangely, it can sound a bit like Indian, but uh, that's neither here nor there. So this fellow was trying to teach us. He was trying to use transcendental meditation techniques to make us go into meditation, and he told us that we should concentrate on a word, a word that we think is nice. Now, the particular word I used was divine. Now, we sat, we sat down there for about 10 or, uh, we sat down for about 10 or 15 minutes to meditate, and I remember I had like a, I felt an explosion that finished in my head. Now, I didn't know at the time what it was, so I said, I felt this explosion in my head, what was it? So he said, oh, I don't think that was anything, you forget about it. <laughs> um, now, <laughs> once again, I think perhaps, for, perhaps just for a split second, I'd achieved um, thoughtless awareness, and my Kundalini obviously had risen. And then, at a later date, whilst I was asleep, I actually saw my Kundalini rise. And it was as though my head was filled with an intense white flame. And then it went down again, and then it came up again. And then I heard a ping from the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> that is a thing. That's not Kundalini. This is a thing. Mm. And this I assume to be the breaking of the Brahmaranda. No. It, it, it is not. It is, this is what happens to so many people, you see, that that is all the Ida and Pingla problem. Mm. This is... This is Ida Pingla. Ah, I see, pardon me. The sympathetic. Yeah. Mm. That works out and it looks like Kundalini, you see, but you don't get any vibrations in the hand and it looks... Mm. Even some people get a big hole here down below, no? There are this, especially this Muktananda, he does like that. And they get a feeling that you should never feel the Kundalini rising, like, like an explosion, going up like that. Ah, I see. Yeah. Later or after realization, you may feel the slow movement, but normally in realization you do not. Well, anyway, um, that's, that's all I want to say. Thank you very much. Uh, well, anyway, this after all this experience, I, um, initially, of course, I was in quite a mess. I used to take drugs and one thing or another, like <coughs> most of the Western people seem to do these days. And gradually, I found, after being exposed to Matiji's love and Matiji's influence, I found that gradually my interest in drugs, uh, my interest in drinking and smoking, it all dropped out, and I, I gradually became more and more stable and now I find that life for me is very settled and um, you can give realization I find that I can give realization to people and it's I can cure them I uh, yes also I should say I can cure people and uh, I find it the first time I, I gave realization to somebody, I was quite amazed and, and <coughs> just to realize that I could do such a thing. But now, to give realization, it still, you know, that it still makes me feel very nice and, and clean inside. And it's just, it's just wonderful. This kind of experience many people get, like Sophie <coughs> Krishna also had like that, and so many people get a feeling like that, that something goes up, suddenly shoots off, and you feel exploded and opened out and all that. But that is not the Kundalini. It is the sympathetic nervous system, which is very much in strain, you see, the, her strain. And in that expression of that strain, what happened? That the whole thing, the energy of the complete sympathetic, whatever they have, the parasympathetic is sucked in, into the sympathetic. If the sympathetic is too much activated, you see, mm. then what happens, the parasympathetic system has your stored up energy, whatever it is. So it just sucks in all that. And when it is sucked in, suddenly the uh, wave from uh, the 
pelvic plexus down below starts mm. because you see the all the energies st- are released <coughs> to the sympathetic mm. because the sympathetic is so exhausted that whatever is the energy left in the chakras is released once it is released you see all that release energy you see makes you feel that the energy is rising within you because it is rising to your and pingla now this is the uh, energy which is just sucked into your and pingla it rises up mm-hmm. and it you can feel it going up and coming down and all that but the the after effects of this is one is this that such a person of course in these uh, uh, this these experiences people feel sometimes they a uh, horrible thing also that they, they feel that uh, there's a heat liberation sometimes they feel some sort of a scorpion uh, bites going on or some snakes coming up and all kinds of things can happen in this can be very horrifying also this one and could be very simple also but when this happens after effects is like that that you become arbitrary you see sort of all this uh, uh, drug system started afterwards that after that because once you are released from that sense of self control in between you see you can take to anything like this because you are free now mm. to whatever you please you see and that's how you can take to drugs and things and this is what uh, the all these gurus are doing is to take out the stored energy which is controlling you suck them out on to the sympathetic there are so many ways by they can do it they can starve you they can make you work very hard they can make you tired they can uh, they can make you say some mantras things i mean they make your sympathetic work so hard that ultimately a stage is reached where your chakras release all the energy that is stored in them and just get out of it you see so all this energy they will suck in and a person feels oh suddenly something has happened but in these circumstances you see you can may have a big hollow in the head like that as is like a mad person has you see here a big hollow and the whole thing is sucked in and you get a hollow there like that so many people get it that is a very different but because all that energy that was inside is sucked in. so it has become like a big hollow inside you see like a mad person has to the same thing so this is this is the way people confuse between kundalini awakening and the exhaustion of the sympathetic normally in the kundalini awakening through through surge yoga you do not feel anything it just goes up and works up but sometimes if there is after realization if there is an obstruction due to certain uh, combinations it may be the obstruction may go out like that but there's a tremendous difference between the two that mm-hmm. first you you release in the hands of the vibration starts with that but with the first one you do not get on the contrary you get heated up and you start avoiding yourself escaping from yourself and this starts and that's how you get into these drugs this is this is very much played by the by these gurus you see that's what they do to you they exhaust you completely so that you cannot withstand reality and the present moment and so you try to get into something and once you try to escape it you see you just the whole release of the stored some parasympathetic takes place and the rate is a broken and you are broken you become arbitrary it's a cancer stuff sort of a thing so that's not kundalini awakening but we would say it is more sympathetic uh, system which comes into play and the movement of parasympathetic attitude you can say what you call that pumping up parasympathetic uh, movements of the pumping up of the energy starts so they start putting it into the thing and the whole thing is sucked in because of the exhaustion so one should not confuse between the two because after realization you cannot take to drugs and things easily it's very difficult you have to really force yourself to take to drugs mother oh. i had, it, you just answered now something that i never questioned because after i met you i didn't want to question it i had two years bef- before meeting you i had an extremely powerful experience of the same kind i was with a very